This series of lenses might be some of the most important lenses released for the Fuji X mount because they overcome these two key complaints I hear about the Fuji X system. And that is you don't get the same shallow depth of field that you do with a full frame camera. And you also don't get the same low light performance that you do with some of the best full frame cameras on the market right now. Well, this little lens with its 0.95 maximum aperture overcomes both of those things. And when we look at the shallow depth of field, the first thing we have to understand is 0.95 or f1.4 is the same on a crop sensor camera as it is on a full frame camera. It isn't that fact or that maximum aperture that actually changes the shallow depth of field. It's the fact that the full frame camera has a wider field of view, so you are able to get closer to your subject and the distance between you and your subject and your subject and the background helps determine how shallow that depth of field is. And when you have to move back with the same focal length on a crop sensor camera, you get a less shallow depth of field. But if you have a full frame camera shooting on a 25 millimeter lens with an f1.4 maximum aperture, and you back up with the crop sensor camera and shoot at 25 millimeters at 0.95 maximum aperture, which is what this lens can do, you get a very, very similar depth of field, a very similar shallow background or blurry background. This means you get effectively a full frame look on a crop sensor camera. Now, the second criticism of crop sensor cameras is the fact that they don't have the same low light capabilities as a full frame camera. Now, this isn't always true, and this is not a one-to-one -one ratio, and there are certainly crop sensor cameras. A number of the Fuji crop sensor cameras actually have better low light performance than some full frame cameras. So once again, this is not a one-to-one -one ratio, but if all things being equal, if each camera is employing the same sort of technology, the crop sensor camera has a higher pixel density, it fits more pixels in a small area of the sensor, and that means it just has a little bit less light collecting ability, and that means that sort of by default, if sort of all things are equal, the full frame camera can have better low light performance. And in general, if you look at the best crop sensor cameras, at these sort of hybrid camera systems like the Fujis, and you compare them sort of to, to the best full frame cameras in low light like the Sonys, you're gonna find that the full frame sensor cameras are better. But once again, if those cameras are using a, a 1.4 maximum aperture lens and we're using a 0.95 maximum aperture lens, not only are we going to equal that performance in low light conditions, in most cases we are going to exceed it and have even better low light capabilities than a full frame camera. And I think it's for that reason when I asked this company which camera system do you sell the most of these lenses to? It's not crop sensor Canon cameras. It's not crop sensor Sony cameras. It's crop sensor Fuji cameras. And I think this is because the Fuji users out there are recognizing this and they're using these lenses to overcome those crop sensor disadvantages. And this particular lens is part of a series of lenses of these 0.95 aperture, maximum aperture lenses. The company is called Lawa. They make a number of sort of unique and specialized lenses and this 0 .9, 0 0.95 series is part of that. This one's a 25 millimeter lens and this is like kind of built like a work of art. The fit and finish on this thing is unbelievable really. It's an all metal lens. It's got a built in metal lens hood. It has a metal lens mount. It is just a just a beautiful lens. I couldn't possibly say anything negative about the build quality on this lens. It also has something that I really, really like, the ability to either de-click the aperture ring or click the aperture ring where you get some firm clicks. Now, I generally use it clicked because I just like to know where it is and I don't generally change my aperture while I'm shooting video. But if you are shooting video and you wanna be able to change the aperture and you don't want any sound or any sort of juddering movement in your footage, you can de-click it and it moves nice and smooth. The focus ring is also extremely smooth. You're not gonna bump that and sort of knock that out of shape. 
and just all around, it is a really, really well-built lens. And most of the time I was using this lens, I was shooting at a 0.95, which I think is the whole point of this lens. If you are going to go out and get a 0.95 lens instead of a, a 1.4, which there's plenty of f1.4 lenses out there, I think you really want to test it at sort of that f at least 1.2, f1, 0.95, at that sort of range, because that's kind of the whole point of having a lens like this. So most most of the samples in the photos and videos that you're going to see coming up on screen now were shot at 0.95. And it has a really beautiful image that's produced by this, uh, this lens. And in the center of the image, it is razor sharp. I was shocked by how sharp it was at 0 0.95. Now, I have tested some of the, I don't know, cheaper Chinese sort of no-name lens manufacturers, which have lenses that go to 0 0.95. And what I found is at 0.95, I considered those mostly character lenses, like they had a really interesting look, but they weren't necessarily sharp in the center of the image. With this lens, it is razor sharp in the center of the image. I was surprised at how sharp it was. Now, at 0.95, as you get to the edges of the frame, you definitely get some softness there. And I certainly wouldn't be putting the subject of the video or the photo at the corners or the edges of the frame when you're shooting at 0 0.95. But in most cases, this kind of gives you, I don't know, a, a nice bit of vignette. It gives you a nice bit of softness around your subject that is somewhere in the middle three quarters of the frame. And if you do that, you're going to get a very nice image and a very sharp detailed image even at 0 0.95. Now I did notice when I had straight horizontal lines in the shot, you do get a little bit of barrel distortion. It's nothing that you couldn't easily correct in editing because it's quite consistent. It's also something that I wouldn't worry about for video. If you see any of these Hollywood movies out there that use reasonably wide lenses, you're gonna see that most of them will have an actual significant amount of barrel distortion. So that's not something unusual and I don't think really detracts from the image at all, but it's just something I thought I should mention. So when it comes to low light performance and getting a blurry background, this is probably probably the best lens that I have ever tested on the Fuji X mount. And I really can't think of a lens that is even a close second. It's kind of unbelievable. Now, are there any disadvantages to this lens? Uh, yes. If you are shooting at a 0 0.95 maximum aperture, the depth of field is so incredibly shallow, it can be very, very hard to nail focus at times. And we've got to consider that we are using a full manual focus lens. So we're going to have to do that by hand. Now, the Fuji cameras have quite good systems as far as focus peaking and punching in to help you nail focus. So I was able to nail focus on a number of occasions, but I also did get a number of shots where I didn't quite nail the subject or the eye or whatever I was trying to shoot. Having said that, because of the level of background blur compared to the subject that I'm trying to shoot, you actually do get kind of this effect that the more blurry background actually makes the subject look more in focus even when it's a little bit soft. And when you're shooting video, which is scaled down from you know 26 megapixels or 40 megapixels, depending on the sensor you're shooting, to sort of 4K video, that becomes less critical, just nailing that perfect focus. And if you are shooting a photo and you're not cropping in and you're sort of viewing it on any normal size screen, you probably won't notice that you haven't just nailed that sort of eyelash sharp detail in focus. It's just not something you're gonna notice on a smaller screen or if you don't crop in. Now, if you're interested in ultra wide angle lenses on the Fuji X mount, I've just thrown a video on screen now, and this is one of the best lenses I've tested on this mount.